Hello. So in today's lesson, we are looking at what was Marshall Aid, or it might be known sometimes as the Marshall Plan as well. It's the same thing. So we've got two learning objectives to understand why the USA set up Marshall Aid and to understand the effects of Marshall Aid for the East and West. Now, you've got a quiz to complete in Google Classroom at the end of this lesson. Please read the questions carefully because you only get one attempt. And any questions you might have, feel free to contact me, gbrown at stopsyhighschool.co.uk. So at the end of last lesson, we looked at uh, the Truman Doctrine and Marshall Aid is closely linked to that. And we left that lesson saying that Marshall Aid was announced. So let's have a look. What was this? Well, after World War II, many European countries were in ruins. They were just pretty much destroyed. They were going to find it very hard to recover. Some examples of this. A third of the industry across Europe had gone. 60 million unemployed. 100 million starving. Food rationing still in many countries. For example, in England, rationing doesn't stop when the war is over. It continues for many years after. Homes, factories, infrastructure such as road and transport were destroyed. Now, the problem is, is in these economic conditions, when people are suffering, communism looks attractive. The reason for that is because the rich have to share with the poor. People want equal status. Now, America realised this. They realised that if these countries remained poor, they were more likely to turn to communism and invite communism in. Therefore, America would have to find a way to support these countries to ensure they stayed capitalist and did not turn to communism. Now, luckily for the Americans, the USA had not been damaged to the same extent as other European countries, and so they could offer help. They were not as badly damaged. They had the finances to support Europe. What exactly could the USA give to these countries then? Well, this is where the Marshall Plan or Marshall Aid comes in June 1947, and it was announced by the US Secretary of State, General George Marshall. That's where he gets the name from. The plan was this, that America would give money, equipment and goods to countries that requested them. You can see that in this image here, this idea of actually supporting them until they got back on their feet. Now, these countries would need to work together with the USA to help their economic recovery. Basically, that means stay capitalist, stay an ally of America as a result. And the countries receiving the aid, receiving the money, once they had rebuilt and had a strong economy, they would agree to buy US goods like Coca-Cola, Hollywood films and jeans. So America was giving this money out, but it was also creating markets for its own goods at the same time. America had a lot of goods they wanted to export or sell to other countries around the world, but no one could afford them. They were all recovering, trying to bring their country back up. By America giving this money out, it meant the countries would stay capitalist, they would have strong allies, and they would have a market eventually for their own goods as well. So what were the results of this plan? Between 1948 to 1952, America gave $12.7 billion dollars of aid to Western Europe. That is an incredible amount. Now, this money came from American taxpayers, as this image shows. The idea is America basically said, we need to give you money so that you can regrow again, so you can redevelop your country. Money was the best solution to do this. The countries of Western Europe could therefore rebuild after the war. And this seems unlikely before the USA's involvement. It would have taken an incredibly long time for the countries to rebuild themselves naturally. And you get to see here from this graph which countries accepted money from America. Look at that who's at the top, the UK with a begging hat on there straight away, needing money, that close relationship. The countries of Western Europe were now successfully tied to supporting the USA. They were now had more allies, the USA, as a result, because of this money being lent out. You couldn't borrow the money from America and then turn your back on them. You had to have a close alliance. This meant America had most of Western Europe on its side against the communists. And the Grand Alliance had now clearly gone. It was a thing of the past. America had set itself up against its former ally. 
and invited others to join them. So, how did Stalin respond to martial aid? Well, first of all, Stalin refused to work with the USA. He didn't want to show how poor his country was. And one of the checks to get martial aid was that you had to have a thorough check of your country's finances. And Stalin would never have agreed, obviously, to become capitalist. So Stalin ignored martial aid completely. And he said the USA were trying to undermine the newly formed United Nations. He said, hang on a minute. We've created a United Nations to protect the world. We agreed on this at the conferences. And yet, America, you are stepping in. You seem to be thinking it's your job to protect the world by giving money out. It's not. It's not your responsibility. You weren't interested in Europe before World War II. And yet he accused the USA of controlling Europe, just like Hitler had done. He makes comparisons with Hitler and Truman. Stalin said that the Marshall Plan was the way of using the America's economic might to divide Europe. He said America was trying to create an economic empire. America was using their money to control other countries. And he called this dollar imperialism. Dollar, obviously the American currency, imperialism taken over other countries. And he set up two systems of his own, common form and commie con, to make sure he had more control over Eastern Europe to deal with this threat. So let's look at these two systems he set up. Common form, first of all. Common form is in 1947, and it's the Communist Information Bureau. And the way I always think of this is com for communist, inform for information. It's communist information being given to the satellite states. So this organisation enabled Stalin to control the communist governments of these countries under Soviet control, as shown in red here on the map. Stalin could make sure each of the countries he now controlled, like Bulgaria, like Poland, like Romania, would follow communist ideas like collective farms and a secret police force. Soviet aims in foreign policy were also controlled. So, for example, Stalin could say to these countries, you are doing as I've said. None of us are accepting martial aid. And this kept Eastern Europe poor as a result. So common form was Stalin making sure that the countries he now controlled followed his will, that they followed what he wanted them to do. So Stalin would hold a regular meeting with each of the leaders and he would say, OK, Romania, have you set up collective farms yet? Get on with it. Uh, Poland, are you having problems with opposition? Set up some purges. Industrialization, Bulgaria, how is that going? And so the communist ideas are being followed. And also he could say to them all, none of us are accepting martial aid. We will do our own thing. Propaganda was also spread in these satellite states. And Truman was now being compared to Hitler. And as you can imagine, this made relations between the East and West worse. The West accused Stalin of taking away the freedoms of these countries and dominating Eastern Europe. So it's interesting, both sides are saying the other is dominating Europe at this point. That's part of the argument. And Comicon 1949. Comicon stands for the Council for Mutual Economic Assistance. But I always just think of it as communist economies. How can you get the economy, the money back up for these communist countries? Now, America just threw money at the problem and Stalin knew he would need to offer the satellite states aid to help them recover if he wanted to keep them under his control. Places like Poland, Czechoslovakia had suffered during the war and so they needed to be rebuilt as well. They needed help. But the Soviet Union had been badly damaged by the war unlike the USA. If you think about all the fighting that took place in the Soviet Union, all the damage that the Germans did when they invaded, this meant that whilst America had a lot of money they could throw at the problem, the Soviet Union did not. They did not have the financial resources to support the satellite states. And so this meant that economic specialization was set up. So let me explain the picture, because this can be quite complex. I always think of Comic-Con as being a bit like a party that you invite people to and you want people to bring foods. 
So person A, you might say, brings a load of pizza for everyone. Pizza B, person B brings a load of drink for everyone, let's say. Person C brings along a load of crisps for everyone. You don't individually bring your own foods unless you're weird. What you do is you bring one type of food and you share it amongst everyone at some house party. I wouldn't know about parties, would I? Now, this is basically what Stalin did. This is like economic specialization, which Stalin set up. So, for example, he said, Czechoslovakia, I want you to focus on heavy industry. I want you to make iron, steel, for example. Don't worry about the other stuff. You focus on things like iron and steel and you share them out amongst everyone, all of the other satellite states. Hungary, your focus is preparing food. So I want you to focus on food. Don't worry about the iron and steel. You've got Czechoslovakia has got that covered. You just focus on food. And so this was called economic specialization. Each country had one or two things they would focus on, one or two different groups. They would focus on producing these goods and sharing them out. And it could be distributed amongst all the satellite states. So this let Stalin control the economies of these countries and made sure they all relied on each other. They all needed each other to survive. It kept them friendly with each other because they only focused on one or two different groups. And so they needed the resources from other countries. But this was not as effective as just giving money to the countries and letting them grow their own way. So the countries remained poor compared to the West as a result. Now, the West continued to accuse Stalin of controlling Eastern Europe, especially as now he could take the best resources from each country to make the Soviet Union even stronger. And so as a result of martial aid and Comic-Con being set up, tension continued to increase. We keep seeing tension getting higher and higher between the two sides. OK, so you have got a quiz to now complete based on this lesson. If you need to go back over any stuff, please feel free to do so. I know some of those systems like Common Form and Comic-Con can be a bit confusing. So any questions you've got with that, feel free to talk to me in class or feel free to email me as well. Read the questions carefully, you only get one attempt. And as always, thank you very much for taking part in today's lesson. Look after yourself and I will see you soon. All the best, bye bye.